Hey Foxy Fighters, I'm your host Foxy Moose and welcome to the Foxy Moose Show, episode 5, where we learn together. Today's video, we're going to be analyzing a character that a lot of fighting game players know, definitely know, and some, some non-fighting game players might not know, and that's Ragna the Blood Edge. So, let's get started. Over here we have our lovely Ragna concept art uh, found on the Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for today we're going to be exploring his, um, his certain uh, elements such as his shape language, his silhouette and readability, the relatability, and the rest versus detail. So that being said, let's go. Um, so starting with shape language and size variation, uh, let's bring this up over here. Um, is this one? Yeah, okay, we gotta turn that on. So we're gonna be drawing on this side of the screen. Let me get my brush. We're gonna be drawing on this side of the screen, or, well, I have them drawn already, but just, uh, we have a transparent layer of this image. Um, why doesn't my brush work? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, so in any case, <laughs> in any case um, for those who don't know, shape language is the way a character communicates to a viewer. Think of it like the English language. Letters form sentences, and sentences are used to express thoughts. So in the case of shape, lang shape language, not shake language, shape language, basic shapes such as circles, triangles, and squares form characters, and the characters tell a story. So, as you can see on the screen, we were able, we basically pulled out the basic shape language of Ragna the Blood Edge. It looks like Ragna has a ton of squares, as you can see. There's a ton of, uh, ton of square shapes in his design. His overall body, uh, his sword, even his accessories are all some forms of square. Uh, let me make sure that I'm on time here. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, his, his overall body, the sword, even his accessories are all some form of square. Uh, this would imply that he's sturdy and, you know, hard to get around or through or something related to a wall or a movable object. And as we all know, Ragna has somewhat of a stubborn personality. Um, we also see very few pointy slash triangular shapes in his hair, but that's more so about like the, the trope. Of the, at the time of, you know, the, the protagonists of different animes, they all had spiky hair. Um, but I think it fits really well with Ragna, just because it helps to show off that kind of sharpness to him. Which also fills his story pretty well, as he's apparently really quick to, to anger, and isn't the most approachable guy in, in, the, in the game. Now, when it comes to size variation, Let's think about it like this. Let's pull this up. Uh, so size variation is having the different, uh, have, creating interesting designs and appealing designs using different sized shapes. So if Ragna was all just, if all of this was blue, let me see if we can draw in here. Um, if this was all like the same size, if we had like a really thick, whoops. If he had a really thick arm everywhere, you know, he had thick feet, you know, his um, sword was thick, like the same thickness as everything else. You know, this doesn't look interesting anymore. This doesn't really look interesting because everything's very, everything's very samey. You want to avoid samey. Samey does not create interesting designs. Interesting designs that it's, it's created by size variation. So we have these small limbs, we have this big like body. And this is the way, there's different ways that you can think about size variation. I personally think about size variation, and I break it down into three parts, which is the, I break it down into the body, I break it down into the limbs, and I also break it down into any uh, accessories. I just uh, put X. 
I break it. Those are the those are the three ways that I normally break it down. And now, uh, if the character isn't supposed to have any accessories, accessories meaning if they had any shoulder pads, if they had a sword, something else that wasn't uh, on their person. Um, and the way I uh, the way I structure things is by key components. So the most important part. So say the body is the most important, or this accessory is the most important. Let's get it red here. If the accessory is the most important, I'm gonna make this sword like huge. You know, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it seem like it's important. And not everybody has the same. I recently learned um, that people think about size variation in different ways. One of the people that I watch, and some of you may be familiar with, is Keenan Lafferty. He thinks about size variations in terms of. <clears throat> in terms of large, medium, and small, which is how I, I generally think about it this way as well. And then I know somebody else, another friend of mine, his name is uh, Camoglio. He thinks of things in terms of uh, not so much large, medium, small, but just in terms of general size variation. So, you know, it doesn't have to be all like this. It can be like, well, let's put this one here. And then maybe he'll have like another one down there. And it's just still interesting, even though there's more, it's still interesting because there's the most important thing about this is the rest area. And we'll get into that with the, with the details versus rest. Uh, so let's turn that off. All right. Um, so you can see that there's a nice balance. Oh, I think I turned off one of the hoops. Um, I hope we can go back. <laughs> okay. Um, let's turn that off. I don't think we need that anymore, actually. Uh, what is this? Oh. Um, okay, so, so you can see that there's a nice balance between all the different shapes. Um, and I like to think about this part, like I said, in terms of large, medium, and small. So let's, let's move on to silhouette and readability. Uh, so this is the silhouette. Now, the silhouette and readability of a character are extremely important. Uh, it's what will determine if your design is solving the correct problem and it will help you stay on track. What we need to be able to tell, we need to be able to tell what a character is and what they do at a glance with little to no question. So here we have Ragnar Silhouette and what I like to do when I'm in Photoshop is zoom out and squint my eyes until I can barely see the character. So at this stage, you know, I'll zoom all the way out, I'll zoom out and then I'll squint and I'll say, what does that character look like? You know, so I'm getting a very like angular, like a very triangular shape. And then we, we zoom in and say, like, okay, you can get a bit more of the, the details. So that's what I like to do um, with the silhouettes to make sure I stay on track. Um, now keep in mind, each person's brain will fill in a silhouette differently, but ultimately everybody should have a unanimous, a una a unanimous vote in what the character looks like. Everybody should say it looks like one thing. So with that being said, the silhouette for Ragna, in my opinion, looks like a female swordsman. And that's, that's if we zoom all the way out, if we zoom out like this, and then we squint until, we can, until our eyes are like, until we can just keep our eyes open just enough to see like something like a blotch of something on the screen, Ragna looks like a female swordsman. And I say the reason for this is that the hip area, let's, get, uh, let's create another layer. Um, so it looks like this hip area sticks out. It appears to be bigger than what it is. Now, because of that, and because of the, the way this, uh, the way his pants are also known as Hakama, the way his pants are shaped when you squint, it almost looks like one like dress. Like it almost looks like a complete dress. Uh, but this, however, the shape of the shoulders actually helps the character read a bit more as uh, as a male. So that's a bit of a saving grace there. Um, we're, now we're on to relatability. Relatability in a character design is the art of making a character similar to something that people know. An example of this would be Mario, as he's relatable to a plumber. The point of relatability is to help people understand what the character is at a first glance. 
it ties into the silhouette. Everything ties into one another some, at some, in some way. Um, so, you know, imagine you picked a character in a fighting game because you thought they looked like an aggressive grappler, only to be disappointed by the fact that they were actually a long-range keep boy character. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy, right? I wouldn't want that. Like, imagine if Zangief was, like, an actual, like, a long-range character. Um, so, do, 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 do. so here, he, he still looks like some kind of swordsman. And you can tell, let's actually, let's actually get out of the silhouette. Let's, let's get out of the silhouette. Um, uh, so you can tell he's like, if you look at this one over here, if you look at this here, so he has a sword. You can tell that he's some kind of swordsman. And he seems like he would have some kind of range. Like, he looks like he does close combat, first and foremost. But he does have these special-looking gloves. And if you look closely, as you can see in this concept art, he has different colored eyes, which may infer that he has some kind of special powers. You know, that being said, Ragnar looks like a close combat fighter that may have some kind of awesome transformation or surprising moveset. Um, now let's move on to rest versus detail. I'm trying to keep these videos condensed for you guys into, into 10 minutes, because um, I, I know a lot of people don't like looking at long videos. Um, so we're, now we're down to rest versus detail. And rest versus detail simply checks if there is a balance between the areas of rest and the areas of detail. Now this is about to get a little bit complicated, but, but bear with me. Um, areas of rest are where the viewer can rest their eyes after looking at complex shapes, which are the areas of detail. Think of it like this. If you're watching a movie and everything is super action-packed with no calm moments, nothing in the movie would be interesting or memorable. If that movie has a lot of calm moments and the action finally shows up, it would be one of those, uh, those awesome hyped up moments that you'll never forget. You know, like one of the action packed fight scenes, maybe if you guys have seen Infinity War, you know, you have like a lot of calm moments where there's like dialogue and talking and then you have the action packed like fight scenes. Like at the beginning of the movie, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but if the, movie, if the whole movie started, if, if the whole movie continued that way, it wouldn't have been as interesting. So let's pull up, um, whoops. Let's pull up the rest versus detail layer. And here you can see that the magenta, and the, the, the magenta color indicates where our rest areas are, and the blue color shows where the detail areas are. As you can see, there's a nice balance of rest and detail because you have this large magenta shape, and then you have these, these carefully chosen spots of detail. Now, you might actually notice that your eyes go from the blue detailed areas around his waist and trail downward towards his shoes. That's because there's that big, like your eyes are like, oh man, I'm, I'm over here. Wait, let me, uh, let's draw this. Let's draw in our handy dandy notebook. Let's pull out a green. So your eyes are gonna be like, ah, oh, what's all this going on in this area? And then after seeing that, you're like, whew. I'm tired now. Now you come down and you're like, ah, this is, this is where, the, this is the AC on a hot day. This is you going for a jog on a hot day and this is you like under the AC on a hot day. And then we have some more, like you go back outside and you're like, ah, okay. Now imagine if this was all like, yeah, 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 mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. It's like, where do you look? Now you're forced to look up here but there's no reason for this area down here to be that busy. That doesn't need to be that busy because there's nothing important. All of the, the most important part of the character is in the face. The face is the, the always more than likely going to be the focal point of a character. That's just simply because humans tend to try to find a face or something relatable to a face as fast as I can. That's why when you look at clouds, you say, oh, I see, the, I see an animal. I see, you know, my cousin down the street or something. That's because people can recognize faces. Your brain works in mysterious ways. But that's it. I, I'm, I'm really glad <laughs> that we were, I hope, we, did, we, did we stay under 10 minutes? I think we, we went a little bit over 10 minutes, but that's okay. 
Um, hopefully, you guys saw this uh, saw this as valuable. I want to apologize for not having um, a video up um, last week. It's just because I've been trying to I've been trying to basically realign my goals and making sure that I'm going on the right track. So I'm going I'm going to try. Keyword is try. I'm going to try to get up two videos a week for you guys. Two videos a week. Now, let me know in the comments what kind of videos you guys would be interested in learning about. If you would want more tutorials or if you would want more stuff like this, I'm more than happy to do either or um, because everything is, I'm learning right with you guys. So everything is a learning experience for all of us. So that being said, and I know I say that a lot. If you have any ideas for a video game character that you would like to see broken down and studied, please leave a comment below. Um, for daily content updates on... Uh, for, for daily content updates that I make, um, there's a bunch of other good stuff too. Go over to the Twitter so you can see all that stuff. There's a lot of good content over there. I put I put a lot of effort into that into that stuff for you guys. Um, and the, the, so the link is going to be down in the description below. If you can go over there and follow me, that'd be great. Um, and if you enjoyed the video uh, and would like to see more, be sure to give this a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can be informed. Uh, if not, then give it a thumbs, a thumbs down, and that's okay too. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much, and I love you guys. See ya.